I welcome everyone to the 16th episode of the Cassandra Properties Podcast. Uh, we absolutely have one heck of a treat for you today. Um, it's not just a treat for the audience, it's a treat, an honor, a, pri a privilege for myself. I, I follow his content, super inspiring guy. Uh, today we're joined by Carlos Reyes from All In Nation. Um, Carlos is a serial entrepreneur. He is truly the American dream. Uh, everyone, let's welcome Carlos. How are we doing today, baby? I'm ready. I'm ready to serve, brother. I'm ready to serve, man. I can't wait for uh, for this. And, you know, God willing, everybody out there uh, listening gets impacted. You know, it, it really hits them. It, it, it hits them and, and it moves something inside them to to try to make them just reach their max potential, you know, peak, peak performance. So, God willing, today's episode serves a lot of people out there, God willing. But bless, bless. Thank you for asking and uh, uh, appreciative of being here today. No, well, I can say with, with absolute certainty that your content moved me. Um, so I oh, think it's going you. to really help a lot of people out there. So as we often uh, on this podcast, we kind of go back to the beginning. And in your case, I think more than any other guest we've had, it really applies. Can we go back to the the early days and, uh -huh. and talk about your childhood and some of the things you went through and, and kind of how we ended up where we are today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know what? Let's let me give everybody a beef. I'm uh, sorry, a brief background of my story. You know, I wasn't always I wasn't always. So, well, you know, most entrepreneurs, for some crazy reason, by the way, mentally and spiritually. Right. We, we kind of are always this person that we kind of have that that instinct inside, like, hey, I, I want more. And I don't, it's not like it's not like we want more out of greed. It's not like we want more out of gluttony. You know, it's, it's just, we want more for ourselves and for our family because we know that life is very, life is short. It's, you know, like the Bible says, it's the blink. It's like a blink of an eye. People yeah. don't even know, like my, I got an eight year old daughter now, you know, and I got, she's eight years old. I got a two year old and folks need to understand out there that, you know, it's, if you want more for yourself, you're going to have to be willing to do more, right? And that's what today's episode is all about. And, you know, I'll start out by saying this, you know, yet I, I've been blessed uh, to be in the position I am now. I'm like a, like a 30, 30 year overnight success, right? 30 years overnight success, right? So I've been grinding since I was five years old, you know? And uh, before we get into that, I just want to let everybody know out there, you know, before the 27 businesses and, and multiple sectors of, you know, different industries, you got, I got, I got two medical companies, uh, nationalmedicalsurplus.com, nationaldiabeticsurplus.com. I have a solar company, solarfuse.com. Um, I have, uh, I have a few software companies out there, investorautomation.com, et cetera. Um, you know, before all these businesses, and most importantly, obviously, offerkey.com and uh, nationalcashoffer.com, which is, you know, um, something that we, uh, we established in 2015. Before these businesses, um, I was, a, a, I've always been, I'm still, I am a regular, regular Joe, you know, regular Joe and um, just trying to provide for his family. I've, I've worked in corporate America for, you know, 10 plus years, but even before let's, I'm rewinding, I'm doing some, I'm doing some reverse engineering, right? Now I'm this person that's living his, his ideal life, his dream life, right? I got my, I got a beautiful family. I got my ideal family, right? We, uh, me and my wife have been together since we were kids. We were in, we were teenagers when we met and we started dating. And here we are 19 years later, right? We've only been married for two, by the way. <laughs> so, um, 19 years later, um, I have, I have the, the family of my dreams. I have the health of my dreams. I have the Lord and God of my dreams. You know, he's always been with me. Um, I have the businesses of my dreams. I have the partnerships of my dreams. I have the network of my dreams. I have the, you know, the little stupid, the junk, right? I got the Rolls Royce and the, you know, the Porsche Cayenne. And, I, you know, I got all these, these, all this junk, right? It's, it's junk. It, they're like little fruits. They're little fruits. Before all this, you know, all this stuff that I have now, I was, I was, a, I was a, a person that was born into extreme poverty. You know, I was born into extreme poverty in, in Mexico. Uh, 
the state is called Sonora. It's the northern part of Mexico. And where I was born, uh, brother, it was um, dirt roads and, and dirt floors. We didn't have concrete as flooring and we didn't have asphalt as, as roads, right? I was, born, I was born in Hermosillo, Sonora, which is the capital of Sonora. And believe it or not, as poor as that city is, even though it's the capital, we couldn't even afford to live there. So we, I moved when I was two years old to Guayma, Sonora, which is even a poor city. Right now we're talking mountains and almost cardboard boxes, like some third world country type of stuff, right? With laminate, laminate roofing and, and, uh, and, and back houses. And I'm going to get into de those details, but that's, that's who I, that's who I am. I was, I was born into extreme poverty, right? You got, you know what a pendulum is, you know, it swings back and forth, right? Well, I happen to be born on the complete opposite side of the pendulum of success, right? I'm, I'm like over here, like most people are born like in neutrality, kind of okay here and then we start building. Yep. I'm born over here, right? I'm born in the negative. I'm born in the red, right? So I was born uh, into, in, in, you know, into extreme, extreme poverty. Like I'm telling you, man, like you might not believe it. If you watch some of my videos, you'll see the kind of poverty that I come from. And, you know, I'll, I'll give you a description of, of where, you know, most of my childhood, because I didn't come to America uh, until eighth grade, right? I, uh, and I'll go into that story, but um, you're talking about a 350 square foot house made out of wood. And it's not like the cardboard that you use for like, you know, Home Depot boxes, right? It's not that kind of cardboard. It's a different kind of boarding. But nonetheless, it's, it's literally... You know, wooden, uh, you got wood, I don't know what you call them, pillars holding up the cardboard, and then you got laminate on top. So whenever it rains, you, yeah. you can hear every single drop, right? It's hard to sleep during those nights. I, I remember those very vividly, by the way. And inside of that 350-square-foot uh, house, on one side, you had my, my grandfather, my grandpa, rest in peace, and my beautiful, amazing grandmother who raised me, rest in peace. Then on the other side, you had myself and my brother. My brother, rest in peace. He's the younger brother. Lost him in January of this year. Um, you know, and then I had, and then you had my mother on another bed. So now you got three beds. You got my mother. You got my mother on one bed. You got me and my brother on another bed on one side of the room. And then you got, and then you got my grandpa and my grandma on the other side of the room. And by the way, when I say room, I'm talking about like it's one living room, one living space, common area. We're not like, oh, he has, they have their bedrooms. He has, no, no, no. One, you know, like sardines and one, you know, one little, right? One package. And then in the corner, we had like a sheet and a bucket with a little drain. Now that was concrete. We had like a little slab of concrete with a little sewer system that my grandfather, uh, it took him, I don't know how long to build. Well, my, my grandma mother would warm up the water in the uh, kitchen. So we had the living space and we had a small little kitchen, dirt floor. And then she would warm up the water so we can actually like take showers out of a bucket, right? We didn't have like a, a shower head, anything like that. We didn't have a bathtub, you know, we didn't even know what the heck that was back then. So we would literally take showers out of a bucket, right? We had soap, we had water and my grandma would warm it up for us and we would shower. Now, you go to the back uh, to, to the backyard and you have a washing board. You know, have you seen those washing boards where you just scrub your, your clothes or like little layers and you know, we had a washing board where my grandma and my mom would, would wash uh, our clothes. And then we had hangers like a, a, a metal rod and we would hang our clothes in the backyard. And we had these wooden little, little, I don't know, clips that would hang our clothes. And then in the back area, my grandfather built uh, with his bare hands, literally built a back house made out of wood with like a, a stall where we would actually use the restroom, you know, one in number two. Right. And that was my, that was my childhood. That was my upbringing. And then when I was five years old, my, my mother, she's like, I got to do more. I got, you know, I, I, I need, I need to do something for my children because this isn't the life that I want for them. So what she did was she crossed over to California first, illegally, through a, a border called San Isidro, which is near Tijuana, Mexico, right? It's a border of San Diego. 
So she crossed over illegally, started working the fields. Eventually, she was granted amnesty. So she started getting, she got her paperwork, right? And then she got a better job. She went from working the fields. Then now she's, pack- she's packaging um, dried uh, fruits at a, at a manufacturing company out there, like a big old warehouse. It's an assembly line. And she's just like, dried fruits, uh, plastic packaging, boom, next, 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 right? Saved up enough money to bring us over. And the first time that we tried to come over through the same border that she came through, uh, it was a sewer system. And she had my... She had- I'm sorry to, to interrupt you, but I, I, I want you to really talk about that journey coming over and explaining to the audience because I, I listen, as like I said, I follow your content. Absolutely. And, and how you described, you know, this wasn't, hey, we're going to jump in a car and we're going to come to America. Absolutely is, not. If you yeah. could spend a, a little bit of time on that because that is some really powerful stuff. Thank you, brother. So the first time that my mother attempted to bring my, my brother and myself over... We went through a sewer system. She's, she, I can walk. So she's grabbing me by the hand and she has my brother on her. You know, she has, she's carrying my brother because he, he's like, he can't really walk. He's about two, three years old or whatever. I'm five, right? And I'm walking and then we get caught and we get thrown back out. And then we're like, okay, we're going to wait two days and then we're going to try it again. Then we tried it again. You know, this is a sewer system. And there was a lot less restrictions, you know, like borders weren't as secure back then as they are now, you know, thank God. Right. But, um, so this, this, this next time we actually make it through, we get through and then we, we land, uh, we start living in a small town called Escondido, California, which is a very small town in the San, San Diego County area. And we only lasted there, I would say about a year and a half. It took us so long to get to America, but California was so expensive for a single mother she didn't she didn't know what she didn't know right she you know she didn't know like now i have two kids and you know inflation is going through the roof in california so a year and a half it took us longer to get there than it took us for us to actually for for us our stay there right so back we go um i remember how how defeated we felt I, i mean i remember how defeated we felt as a family coming back to mexico right it's like we we failed we you know we failed unfortunately whether we want to admit this or not we failed financially. We failed, right? And, you know, I, I definitely wasn't old enough to really help her uh, to the capacity that I would have wanted to. But um, so fifth grade, you know, I'm there third grade, fourth grade. And before I hit the fifth grade, I'm back to back in Mexico, back to starting from scratch, right? And now we're like, you know, I'm a little older now. I'm in the fifth grade. I think I'm about, I don't know, 19 years old. And uh, my mother says, hey, Hey, that's not that's not the last time that you know we, that we're in America. We're we're gonna do this again. Now I know what to do, and let's do it. As a nine year old kid, right? So I start bagging groceries uh, for a living, and my mo- mother starts working at a resort out in uh, in uh, San Carlos Bay area where a lot of tourists comes. So she's cleaning the rooms and she's getting cash dollars for tips, and I'm bagging groceries. I got my little hat on and I got my little apron, and I'm bagging groceries as a kid. I'm bagging groceries. I'm taking it out to the, you know, to the parking lot. And then I'm asking for my tip. And then, you know, we start stacking up some cash. We finally stack up enough cash to, to give her a little bit of reserves and to give her enough to, to get back here on a Greyhound. She takes a Greyhound to Phoenix, Arizona, where I am now, right? And this time, you know, she learned just like entrepreneurs, right? We learn from our failures and we learn, you know, the things that, okay, I could have done this better. I should have done this. I should have saved more, whatever, right? She learned. She learned from that failure. God bless her, her heart. She's alive, thank God. And uh, and um, we, you know, she she she's like, let's do this again, right? She comes over to Phoenix, working the fields again, you know, working the fields, picking fruit at this point. 120 degree weather outside Phoenix, Arizona is very hot. She came in during the summertime, unfortunately, and uh, she's 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 saving and she's grinding, and then she saves up enough cash to bring me first. Now imagine this. Imagine as a five-year-old, you were, you know, you, you were kind of unintentionally abandoned by your mother because, you know, as a kid, we don't know. Like, we just know that our mom is in here, right? Look, at, I, got a, I got a picture, actually. It's funny. Look, I got a picture of that's my mother and that's me in Mexico as, as you know, as a kid, right? So she's, look at this. I, I, I promise I didn't plan this. This is actually right here, right? So um, that's, that's me. That's my grandfather. That's, uh, you see the... You see the house, like you see the the wooden, right? That's not brick, brother. That's wood, 
And then the kind of, you know, the cardboard type of deal. That's my grandmother. That's who raised me. That's me. Uh, that's me. And that's my grandpa. So this time around, she's like, I know what to do. She saves up enough money. She brings me first, not my brother. She brings me first, right? She's, uh, she's, she pays a coyote $25 in Nogales, Sonora, which is the border of Arizona. Pays them $25. It's, it's late at night, it's around 9 or 10 o'clock, and I'm, I'm like 10 years old, right? And she's like, hey, um, I, I want you to trust this man. Whatever he tells you to do, you do it. I will be waiting for you on the other side of this fence. I'm going to be at the McDonald's waiting for you. So the guy's telling me to duck. I'm ducking. The guy's telling me to get up. I'm, I'm, the guy's telling me to run. The guy's telling me to walk. I'm doing all these things as a 10-year-old. And then he, he slips me through a hole in the fence. Slips me through a hole in the fence. I meet my mother. She brings me up to Phoenix, Arizona. And brother, I... Here I am, right? So we start working. We start working on my my immigration paperwork, which is a very expensive and extensive process. By the way, it took me so long to get a work permit. Then after my work permit, I got a I got a permanent residence. And after five years of having a permanent residency and staying out of trouble, I got my citizenship. I, I became a citizen of the greatest country on God's green earth. You know. The, the, uh, the capitalism, right? The, the mecca of capitalism in the world. And, and then, you know what? I start grinding as a little, as, as a, as a 10 year old, 11 year old, even here in, 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 the, in the States, I'm uh you know, I'm, I'm being picked up in a van and I'm selling chocolate and I'm, I'm doing everything I can to help my mother at this point, right? To put food on the table, to, to, to save up enough money to bring my brother over, right? And the first place that we lived here in Phoenix, Arizona, I remember this like it was yesterday. We lived in a two bedroom apartment along with 12, 12 or 15 other people. My mother and I would sleep in the hallway. Thank God that the hallway was carpet. We would sleep in the hallway and everybody's getting ready. We had like, got like, we had full blown families in there, by the way, typical immigrant, like, you know, setup, right? These guys are getting ready to go to their construction jobs in the morning. It's like five, you know, five in the morning. And we're sleeping in the hallway. And we did that for about a year before she saved up enough money to get another place, a one-bedroom apartment for her, me, and then save enough money after that to bring my brother over, right? So that's kind of the way my childhood went. I never really, unfortunately, got to enjoy being a child, Right. I never really got to enjoy being a child and, and, and that's OK. I have children of my own now and and I, I, I'm letting them be children. I'm letting I'm, I am letting them go through the growing phases and the growing pains. And I am letting them have and do everything that I did not get to do. Right. I didn't even have a father around. Right. So um, that that's kind of my story of where I come from. And then, you know, I, I just I man, a lot of my. A lot of my work ethic, man, came from watching my mom just work her ass off, you know, two jobs, three jobs, 825 an hour. I remember 825 an hour is the most that she ever made at the airport. Um, she was, um, she was, um, it was called LSG Sky Chefs. She was uh, putting, put, you know, the airplanes with the, the airplanes with the little carts, they got all the food in there. She was, she was putting all the food in there, all the food in there, right? Delta, American Airlines, all that. And then um, she just worked her ass off, man. She would do that at night. She would have the graveyard shift there, and then she would work at the cafeteria in an elementary school during the during the day. So my mom was always working, right? Always working. She didn't even get to raise us, right? So, um, man, as soon as I was old enough to help her out, um, I was I was contributing, brother. I'm the oldest in my family, so I'm I'm like the leader of my family. Well, I want everybody out there to know that. There is light at the end of the tunnel that so far it does. It has a storybook ending. I retired my mother in 2017, March of 2017, which was a little three and a half years ago. I retired my mother. Right. And my mother now, she doesn't have a worry, at least a financial worry in the world. Right. Um, she everything's her mortgage is taken care of. I, I bought her her second vehicle now uh, and second vehicle in three years. Her phone bill is taken care of. Insurance is taken care of. Everything, everything is taken care of for her, as rightfully so. She deserves it. She earned it. 
right? So, so that's my story, brother. It, it's, it's an amazing story. I appreciate you sharing it. I, I wanted, we, I feel like we couldn't move on to the rest of what I wanted to talk about until people understood your background, where you came from, and how you got here. It is truly, you are the American dream in every- Thank you, my brother. Thank you. So where, I understand when, when in the beginning we were talking offline, talking about how as an entrepreneur, it's just kind of in you, it's there. It's For me, it's a voice. It's literally like a calling. Um, and I think there's a spiritual component to that. And then there's also just the entrepreneurial spirit. Um, were you driven by, and you know, were you always your, your whole life looking back is like, I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not doing that again. I'll never be there again. Was it for me? And, and I used to be ashamed to talk about this, but it was fear, fear of failure is what drove me. And it drove me to almost uh, off the edge with limits of how hard I work because I would not fail. And, and I found there's a lot better way to do it. There's a, a much more peaceful way to do it as I've gotten older now, but what is it that drove you? Was it fear? Was it just looking back and knowing you were never going to return to, to where you were? How do you, how does this, this Brother, that's the together? first time that, that's, 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 I think that's the first time either in a long time or ever that somebody asks that question. And that's a very important question because people need to have a, a driving force, right? That's, that's a driver. Some people call it my why my purpose, right? So, for me, brother, I, I, I can be very appreciative and grateful that even though I was born poor than maybe, God willing, maybe more than anybody that's listening on, you know, to this, this uh, session here, uh, this episode, um, there's a couple things that were in my favor. Uh, adversity, I, I used adversity. That was, that was definitely my X factor. Adversity was my X factor, right? Adversity was my X factor. That, that's a huge thing for me. For You're right. I operated from a place of, you know what? Uh, it was a place of power. It was a place. It was. It was a place of empowerment. It was a place of, of like, watching my mom struggle, you know, watching us live the way we lived. You know, we we. I left a lot of this out, but we we were on food stamps. We we were on WIC, you know, W I C, you know, from dairy and from the government. We were on cash assistance, right? We were on uh, uh, government housing. You know, we, we went through all that and man, my mom never told me that I couldn't do something. My mom never was like, and my, that's one thing, man, that's the other, I said adversity. The other one was programming, right? No, I didn't have the programming that, you know, intellectuals give you and, and books give you, right? The type of programming that's available now, even through this podcast, I didn't have that, but I had my mother telling me that I was going to be somebody that I'm strong, that. I can accomplish anything that I want to accomplish. My mom had that never give up mentality. You know, she she had that, hey, I'm not a victim. Like she never, even though I was poor as shit, I never felt poor. I never felt poor. I always felt like that was just like, like, hey, it, it's it's where I am now, but it's not where I'm gonna end up. That's amazing. Right? So that that's honestly like going through everything. This is what people don't understand that when you're going through a lot of pain and you're going through a lot of suffering and you're going through all these struggles, man, I know it's hard. Like, I know it's hard. Like I went through it. I know it's, it's hard. Like it's hard, like, like life or death hard. Like, Oh man, I what's, you know, I don't know what's going to happen here, but that fire, that fire built me, right? That pressure built me, that fire made me stronger. How, how can I handle all the things that I can handle right now? Well, hey, hello, because I was I was born different. I was programmed different, right? I was built different. You know, I went I went through. I mean, outside of maybe being in some kind of war, like in other countries, right? Like, I went through everything that you can go through. So, this isn't pressure for me, right? Taking risks, like dropping a million dollars in real estate marketing, like that's that's not a risk for me. That's not pressure for me. You see. All, all that struggle and all that suffering that I went through only allowed me to have a, a, a just a much bigger capacity when it comes to to risk, to you know, to risk, to tolerance, to stress, to anxiety. I went through my brother my entire life. I lived, 
I, unfortunately, whether I whether we want to admit it subconsciously, I, I believe that I lived through a place of, you know, of, of like survival, you know, like fear, anxiety, stress, right? Worry. I was illegal for God's sakes in this country. You know, I was illegal for the in this country. And you can only I'm always on my toes, like, okay, when, what's going on? Like, when are they gonna get me? You know, like when are they gonna get me and throw me back out? Right. So imagine like every day living that way. Man, you just build like rhino skin, right? Like you you build scar tissue for 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 just risk and tolerance and and pressure. I mean, can you you understand what I'm saying? One hundred percent. I've and I've heard you describe it, and as um, I've listened to you and, and listened to your different recordings, you talk about how in hindsight it was a blessing. These were absolutely all you said this adversity prepared you for today and you know running 25 different companies seven of them earned seven figures in gross sales the balance are all in six figures making the decisions that you make every day that ain't nothing compared to nothing what you come up with nothing a lot a lot of the stuff that you hear me say it's not something i read in a book yep it's what's so right different here. about you it's right thank you brother thing it's right here right when yeah. i talk about Hey, your your current your your uh, what do I always say? And this is something I learned obviously from experience. Is like your current situation is not your final destination, right? Like that's how I felt growing up. Yep. You know, I, like hey, I, I'm here now, but this is not where I'm going to end up, right? So when I when you hear me say things like that, it's because it's it comes from here and it comes from from my heart, you know, from my soul. I don't ever. Brother, I'm not the I'm not the next Tony Robbins. I don't even know what he I don't even know what he says, right? I don't even follow Tony Robbins on Instagram. Yep. Right? I'm not the next uh I don't know, Dean Graziosi. I'm not the next uh Gary V, right? I'm I think I think I can serve this world by by just being me and then listening to to where I come from and 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 my experiences and my you know and my suffering. I think a lot of people will resonate because I'm I'm that person. I'm the underdog. I'm, I'm that person. They're like, wait a minute, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. He went through all that, and he's, he, he's accomplishing his dreams. Well, then, well, then I can do it, right? Like, I mean, right? I, I then it's then my situation isn't so bad. You see yep. what I'm saying? Yep. They say you know necessity is the mother of all invention. Wow. And, you know, I never heard that by the way. <laughs> there's a, a such a preponderance of available resources in this country today that people don't have that hunger they don't have that drive they don't comfort comfort yeah, comfort comfort is, comfort. Comfort is killer brother brother we're ordering food from our phones uber <laughs> eats right oh i need a ride uber oh i want to watch a movie netflix yep like we are be we are as a society by the way we are becoming extremely comfortable, and what and what kills growth? Yeah, comfort. comfort. Comfort's a killer. It's either comfort or growth. There's no in between. It's like it's either comfort or growth. And and you know I'm starting to say this a lot now because I don't want people out there like I'm always talking about like the nine to five. I left the nine to five. Leave your nine to five. That's not for everybody. Yep. My my fa my my my. I'm sorry. My yeah. My father in law. My my wife's uh, father. He's been working for the city of Phoenix, driving a garbage truck for like 20 plus years. I'm, baby, I'm in the middle of something here. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, your tooth fell off? Oh, congratulations. Oh, I am so, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Close my door, baby, please. I am so sorry about that. Oh, man, it's, I love it. Again, part of what, you know, got me so excited about getting on with you is you are so real and you've been real through all of the messaging you've put out there. And I was like, I can't wait to get on with this guy because you, you just keep it real. And I, I love this. This is a part of who Thank we you, are. Bro. My My, down and a part of everything that I do. It's the same thing. It's all good, bro. All brother, good. My, my, my daughter has been working on that tooth for two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, tooth fairy has to come tonight. She's eight years old and you know, the tooth fairy is still around. She has a little bit of extra bucks here and there. So there you go. Right. But, but yeah, uh, people are too comfortable, uh, you know, and, and it's, it's so, man, it, it's, it's frustrating to see because 
you can't like, I can't want more for somebody than they want for themselves, right? I'm going to keep pushing out the content. I'm going to keep, pu- I'm going to keep trying to inspire people. I'm going to keep trying to, to impact them, to serve them to my highest capacity. But at the end of the day, they have to be wanting and willing to do what needs to be done. Yeah. Right. I can only, I can only lay out like a roadmap, right? I can like, as you see, I, I'm hitting people every day now, right? Like every day I'm, I'm hitting people three times a day. Like I'm hitting them with like my, like mindset, my I'm, brother, don't get me wrong. I made, I, I created all my businesses from real estate, right? Yep. From the profits of real estate. But I'm, I'm, I, I love more the personal development stuff. Because if we can fix, if we can fix the foundation, if we can fix what's up here and what's in here, the rest is easy, right? If we can fix, if we can do the internal work, the external work is so easy. It's so easy. Like once you become this, this aligned person, right? Mentally, spiritually, physically, the rest, the rest will come. Yeah. The rest will come if you want it, if you want it to come and if you're willing to work for it. It's, 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 a, it's a tough thing to do. For me, uh, it was very, very difficult to go through the process of self-realization and to really take a look inside and see what was driving you, what was making you tick. Um, it has to start there. I, I started with uh, business coaching Um, not too long ago with a a local company called Lions Pride. It's a faith-based group of wonderful individuals that kind of peel the onion. We need more groups. We need more groups like that, by the way. Absolutely. We need way more groups like that. Absolutely. I've had a small measure of success in my market. You know, we've done some good things over the years, uh, but it's a small measure. And when you sit and you really start to peel it back uh, and you realize and you get comfortable with the calling or the voice or what's next. Absolutely. And I've never been more excited in my life about what tomorrow is going to bring. I feel like I'm 45 years old and like I just woke up. Like it's my first it's day. It's just the beginning, right? It's, it's just, just you're, you're so excited for what's to come now. Because what happens, you know, we are, as human beings, we have the, we have the natural urge to serve. I, I don't know what it is, right? We, we, we kind of like once it's like, yeah, we're selfish first. We're selfish. We, you know, for our own reasons, our, our own whys, right? Our own whys is like our own purpose. It's like, okay, I want to build a business. Why? Because I want to provide for myself. I want to provide for my family, right? I don't want to worry about bills. I don't want to worry about, you know, all that stuff, right? And then when you start seeing that come to fruition and you start seeing the money come in, then you're like, okay, wow, I worked – 30 plus years to, to accomplish this, Lord, why did it get old so quick? Why, like, I'll give you an example. My first six figure month came in July of 2016, right? So July, so July, August, September, October, I think by October, I was already like over it. Right. You know, it was like, whoa, woo, you know, uh, I think it was like 123K the, 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 that July of 2016, and then it got better, like 150, and then it got better and better. And then we start building, you know, we, we use all that money towards systems and the right personnel and right and marketing. And and then you're like, wow, you know, okay, well, the emotion, the 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 emotion is is not what it was when I first accomplished, you know, I was chasing this all my life, and then I got it, and then it got old very quick. What's next? what's next right that's when that's when people either you know they they build another company so they can challenge themselves right um they start serving other people start teaching them this business because you know they they become a master of their craft um so we naturally just start to serve other people right we start to serve other people we're throwing free meetups we're doing free videos and youtube and all kinds of right we start serving other people and and don't get me wrong like when you the there's no comparison to to watching somebody's life transform the impact you have on someone's life. Yeah. You're, you're like, Holy smokes. Like, yeah, it, it was difficult for me to become successful, but man, I was able to really help this person or these few hundred or these few. 
some people become successful and that is that is even more fulfilling than when you become successful without a doubt watch others become successful without a doubt outside of being a dad and a husband um being a mentor to some of the folks that i've i've had you know the good fortune to have around me over the years is certainly been the most rewarding thing in my life outside of my immediate family watching others come in and grow um, and be able to, you know, pull, pull down some knowledge from the mistakes you've made uh, and to watch how you impact. And you watch, you know, I've got kids that came in as interns and they get married, they buy their first house, they get their, you know, and now they've got kids and uh, they're buying their second home. And it, there's nothing like that. And, and guess nothing. what, brother, they will always remember you. They, will, they might even name a, a kid after you, right? Like you never know, right? So, right? So they will always remember you. Um, I remember back in uh, 2018, I remember one of my mentees uh, out of uh, um, Huntsville, Alabama, right? Huntsville, Alabama. They, uh, they have a company called Alabama Cash Offer. They do a million something, you know, de definitely seven figures a year. They do a few hundred thousand every single month. They operate in Huntsville, Birmingham, and Atlanta, all right? So I remember I'm FaceTiming my mentee, and he's there in, in the house. I don't know if they're watching a football game. And, and then in, in the background, you got it. You know, it was his parents and his wife and his, his, you know, his beautiful baby boy. The whole family was like, hey, Carlos, how's it going? Hey, Carlos. Hey. I'm like, brother, when that happened, I, 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 I really got very – I got very emotional and um, – I had to really, really hold myself from like letting tears out, right? Something happened. When his family knew my name, when his wife knew my name, his mother knew my name, his his father knew my name, and I didn't even know them, and but they knew me. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm on I'm on to something here. I'm I'm on the right path. I'm where God wants me. I'm I'm exactly where God needs me right now. Absolutely. So that that changed my entire life forever, forever. So you, you have come such an unbelievable, through such an unbelievable path, and we're starting to experience this now uh, where, you know, I'm a deal maker at heart, right? Uh, I'm a, that's my, it's in my blood, it's in my bones, right? The company was started um, by mom in 1989. She went out in an awful economy. She was a trailblazer, a woman doing commercial deals in the New York market. God bless her. Off as nails, my mother. Um, and you know, the, the real estate becomes the mothership, right? And you, you have opportunity now that starts to spin off from that. That's what we're trying to do is we're now, uh, we've launched a commercial lending platform and we've gotten involved in a restaurant. I'm, I'm in app development. Um, I'm developing a software for management, for real estate management. Um, and it's, you know, it's crazy how, if you have that passion, you have that skill set, and, and to people that are listening that are thinking about potentially getting involved in, you know, I call them like these secondary markets or these secondary opportunities, I was afraid. I was afraid to step out of my comfort zone. I was afraid to make a piece of content. I was afraid to make a video. I was afraid to speak in public. I never did any of this up until very recent past. I, I never wrote articles. I never wrote blogs. I never did any of it. And once you break out of that and you, you feel liberated, you start to find that you can step into it. You've got a medical expense company, uh, the medical company, solar company, software company. You can step into these other fields. And if you're a problem solver and you've got that hustle in you, it just clicks. It's, it's almost like you've been in the business for years and you have the ability to to start moving levers and twisting dials and pressing buttons. And all of a sudden, you, you know, you start coming up with a better formula. So was that natural for you? Did that just happen as you started to go into these side businesses or what was that experience like? Yes. So, you know, folks like yourself and, 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 and myself, we are, we're growth junkies. We're growth junkies. We, we love to grow, right? We love to grow. And, when I mean grow, it's not just growing, you know, ladder, laterally, right? It's not. We love to grow like, we love to grow spiritually. We love to grow mentally. We love to grow, you know, with health, you know, physically, right? We love to grow. Yeah. And it's, it's, 
people might say, hey, it's a gift and a curse because then when is enough enough? But no, not, not. See, you know how you said earlier, you said, hey, I was operating from a place of fear and, and anxiety, right? Uh, necessity. But now you're operating from a place of peace and love and and things just begin, you begin to attract these things because you're, you're, you know, now you're, you're such a, you're so aligned and you're in a great place that you just start to attract all these things very, very quickly. Right? So now, now we're very dangerous when it comes to our intentions. Because now that we, now we know, like, if I set out an intention of, of something that I really want to do, what normally happens at this level? Boom, well, boom, right? Instantly, like yep. in, in, in days or, or weeks, right? And and then it becomes a game. It becomes a game, right? And and, and you you just happen to be a great player in the game of life. So you set out an intention, like you know what? I want to develop an app. I feel like it would serve this many people. And, and obviously, the more people you serve, guess what? The more financially you, you become blessed, the more you know, uh, 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 life wise, you know, like just overall, right. Like health wise. And, you know, you just become extremely blessed, right. Because you're putting out that good energy, that servanthood out there. You're, you're helping other people improve their lives. Right. So when you set out an intention now, it's, it's a dangerous thing because you're like, I want to develop an app. And next thing you know, you're already like, you already hit up this guy, this guy, you paid this guy, this is already happening. And I mean, it happens extremely fast. So I feel like in the game of business, that's exactly what kind of happens. Like you start out with one project and then you, you set out the foundation, you structure that project extremely well, you automate that project, you delegate that project, you build other leaders in that organization. And then you're like, okay, this thing is running beautifully. How can I duplicate this with this? Yep. How can I duplicate this with my medical company? How can I uh, duplicate this with my, you know, with my education company? How can I duplicate this with my solar company, right? It just goes on and on and on. Like, we have three crazy projects coming out, crazy projects. We got a predictive dollar coming out. We have a predictive dollar. We have, an, uh, we have a, a virtual training platform coming out. Um, and then we have a all-in-one, it's called Prospect X, we have an all-in-one, literally like CRM, build your website, market from there, text messages, RVM, like everything, everything in one is called Prospect Text. We have these huge projects that we've been working on for two years coming out in the next 60 days. Wow. So, you know, again, just add, you know, add more logs to the fire. You know what I mean? But that's what happens when you figure this out, right? When you get through the first, what the, the year the first 12 months 24 months of resistance 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 man like this this stuff starts to come pretty pretty easily and it becomes a it becomes a really fun game to play so you said something earlier that really struck a chord for me uh and good luck with these projects thank you uh, brother thank you being intentional so you know before i had made the decision and the commitment right because it is a commitment if you're going to go to the next level, it doesn't just happen. It, it comes with sacrifice, right? And it comes with um, pain a lot of times on the other side of it. Um, being intentional, and I want to come back to that also, but being intentional, I was not being intentional. I, uh, as a deal maker, I was intentional and I was crushing deals. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very confident. I've always been confident in that part of my game. You know what to look for. You know what to say. You know how to structure it. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, but but outside of the deal making, I was creating distractions. I didn't even recognize it. You know, you wake up one day and you have a hundred reminders. I use smart sheets and in, in, you know our task management, and you're going through these things and you're busy and you're busy and busy for years, brother. For years, I did that. And then I woke up one day and went, you know, through the help of Chad and, and Lion's Pride, what, what are you trying to accomplish? You're not being intentional. You're not, you know, you're, you're doing things to stay busy, but how is this moving forward your big two, three, or four, or five? I didn't even have a big two, three, four, or five. It was just do deals, do deals, do deals. And it kept me so stunted in my growth and beat, you know, when you said intentional, I went, man, 
being intentional is so important. Absolutely. Actually asking, what is it that I'm doing? How is it helping this specific task? And if it's not, it's got to come off the board. That's it. Can't be up there. Um, so something that I learned, brother, and it's beautiful that we're talking about intention, right? Something that I learned was something I learned from one of my ex-mentors. Uh, sorry, so I'm, I'll repeat that again. Something that I learned from one of my mentors, uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Wilson, was intention, right? Intention, gravity, how the moon is 286,000 kilometers away, right? The moon is 286,000 kilometers away. And guess what? When, when the U.S. or the Russians or now, you know, uh, Elon Musk, whenever they put a rocket together, they burn 85% of, the, of their fuel, that rocket's fuel, and the first, what, two kilometers, the first, 85% of that fuel gets burned. In the first, remember, we're talking about resistance, right? Yep. So 85% of that fuel was burned in the first two kilometers. Wow. So 10% is kind of on autopilot, and 5% is kind of to get you back to Earth at some point, God willing, right? But do you see, let me actually, you know, let me do this uh, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? So you can see it visually. Let me do this visually. So here's your intention, right? Or here's the moon, right? You're the rocket. This is you. This is the intention. Everything in between you and that intention is gravity. In our case, habit, work ethic, right? Everything that's going to get us from A to B, right? So we were talking about the first year being filled with resistance. It could be 12 months. It could be 24. It could be 36 months. However long it takes, it doesn't matter, right? So just like the rocket, we burn 85% of our fuel, you know, in the first two kilometers, aka resistance. Well, guess what happens? You know, you said, hey, so something that I found recently is that like I'm starting to develop all these projects and I'm becoming very successful and I'm, I'm getting really good at this. I'm, I'm, this thing, these things are happening very quickly, right? Because now it's all momentum, just like that rocket, right? 85% of the fuel is burned in the first two kilometers. The rest of it is all momentum, all momentum. So if there's any loss, any loss of momentum at all, we ne you'll never, the rocket will never make it, right? The rocket will make it. If there's any shift, if there's something, you know, something happens, same thing with us, right? The first 12 months, 24 months, it's, it's like, okay, we just burned 85% of our fuel. Now it's gravity and momentum to get us to what we want to, want to accomplish. Yep. See, now when you get to the other side, kind of like where you and I are now, where things are, things are happening very quickly, our momentum, all of that fuel we burned in the beginning, all of that is carrying us over now into, you know, putting these projects together, automating these projects, delegating these projects, right? moving on to another project, creating more, right? Creating more projects, creating more successful uh, organizations and, and app, apps, you know, that serve other people, softwares, whatever, right? I want people out there to understand that the first year is going to be extremely difficult. But if you can make it through those six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, I promise you this, you will never have to work a rest a day of your life for the rest of your life, right? Does it feel like we're working right now? No, not at all. Right? I love what I do. I absolutely love what I do. So it doesn't feel like work, right? You become very obsessive with it. It feels like it feels like a hobby, right? It's actually very unfair. It's a very it's very unfair, right? Like we we love what we do, uh, you know, from business to serving to everything, right? And like I said this in the beginning, man, life is way too short to, 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 to clock in and to do something that you, you really don't enjoy, right? Like, stop, stop, stop wasting the, the years of your life. Stop wasting, you know, stop wasting the energy, the, the youth, right? The youth, the health of your life. Because, by the way, I, I've read this and I have a lot of, a lot of uh, friends that are nurses, right? Uh, men and, feet and women, right? And I read this too, and I, I checked with them. I said, hey, is it true? I read this thing that, I read this report, this article that nurses, you know, whenever they're talking to like um, patients that are on their way out, you know, they're, they're you know, they're, they're ill, they're de morbidly ill, right? Or deathly ill. Um, they ask them like, hey, 
you know, what, what do you think that, uh, you know, what do you think you should have done or whatever? And all they ever talk about is regretting the things that they actually didn't do that they should have done. They don't even talk about like what they did. They talk about the things that they didn't do. I should have took, I, I, I should have rolled a dice on myself. I should have had the courage to do this. I should have stepped outside of my comfort zone. I regret being so comfortable for so long. You see, so I want everybody out there to understand that. I want everybody out there to, to know that, hey, you don't get a repeat. There's no sequel. There's no, like when we die, we're gone. We are, there's no more. When we're taking our last breath, we are out. So if you don't, if you don't take action now, at least if you don't even, man, I'm talking about, I mean, pick up a book today, right? Like start reading a book today. See what happens. A lot, I would love to, to share a book that actually changed my life forever mentally and, and, and spiritually. It's called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker. I want people out there to go get that book. And, and you know what? One thing that I learned from another, another mentor that I have, my peak performance coach, is this. 1% is information. 99% is implementation. How many times have I given uh, an event, right? I, I, like, I got uh, uh, an event uh, called Freedom. Uh, it's mostly for new people. And then I got an event, a very advanced event called uh, Momentum. How many times do we give out content, 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 information, information, information? 90, 97% of those individuals, unfortunately, never go and implement that information and execute on that information. And that's why they don't see a change. They don't see a change. They don't see an impact. So I just want everybody to, everybody out there that's listening right now, to listen to this podcast and listen to every episode before this and every episode after this and take that information and implement it. I don't care if it's one thing or two things or three things, right? Just implement something and watch what happens, right? Watch what happens. And I want folks out there to understand that it's not going to be easy because if this was easy, guess what? Everybody would do it, right? That's, you know, no. I want you. I want. I want you to put your your war vest, your armor on, and know that you are going to to battle. You're going to battle, and you're going to go to war for twelve, uh, like I said, twelve, thirty six months, forty eight months, whatever how long it lasts. But I promise you this: you are going to live a life that people dream of living. You are going to be able to take your family on on dream vacations. You know, one of my dreams was always to go to Hawaii. We take, we, now we take a yearly Hawaii trip, right? Oahu, you know, North Shore, love that place. Um, you're going to drive the, the, whatever car you've ever dreamed of, you saw in a magazine or I don't know, you probably had a vision board, whatever. You are going to have that car. You are going to have the money in the bank, the successful business you ever dreamed of, right? But guess what? That only happens to a very select few, the one percenters, right? The one percenters. So I just want everybody to program themselves in their mind. Hey, this is going to be quite a challenge, but not if, when, when I overcome every single obstacle, every single failure that gets thrown my way, I am going to live the life that nobody in my family even dreamed of living. And I'm going to change the financial trajectory of my family. I'm going to leave such a beautiful, strong legacy for the rest, you know, for future generations to come in my family, right? I, I want people to understand that, like, you have to be willing to be the lamb that sacrifices. You know, you are going to be the lamb. You are going to make the sacrifice. That means that you might have to sacrifice your health. That means that you might have to sacrifice your hobbies. That means that you might have to sacrifice friendships that, you know, that weigh you down. That means that you have to sacrifice, you know, political BS on Facebook and giving that time and energy. I want you to be willing to make those sacrifices so you can do something that nobody's ever done in your family. I want people out there to really understand that. And I want people to really resonate with that. Absolutely. Amen, brother. And, and, I don't know if you guys are dealing with a lot of shutdowns down by you, but, but we've had our more than our share of, of shutdowns. In New York, absolutely, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. And there's another round that's kind of kicking off now. And what's happening is people who are in business for themselves are starting to really push back and 
folks that haven't gone through the sacrifices and people who haven't chose this path can never understand how much this means to us and how many nights we've missed with the family. And I've, I've talked about this before, my wife, bless her soul, how many events I've missed and how many sleepless nights and how many weekends I haven't been around because together we made the decision that I was going to go for it. And then we got to a place and we decided I was going to do it again. And here I am now and, and I'm, I'm you know, trying to raise my game to the next level. And that comes with immense sacrifice. So people don't understand on the other side of it, you're being selfish and how could you feel this way? And people are sick and we, we understand all of that. But the amount of sacrifice that some of us have made here is immense. So I would ask people on both sides to understand where everyone is coming from, right? Communicate, talk about it, see it. And, and you can never feel it until you've done it. But uh, totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. And, uh, and let me just say this for, you know, because it's, it's been a, it's been a tough year, right? It's been a tough year for a lot of people. You know, it's been a tough year and, and, and you know, we can sit here and say, Hey, it's been a great year for us, but that doesn't even matter. That doesn't even matter. It's been a tough year, a tough year for all Americans for, you know, for society in general. And one thing that was a huge awakening an eye opening experience this year was the millions and millions and millions of people that lost their jobs. Yeah. Right. Remember how, have you ever worked in corporate America? You ever working on a five before? Uh, yeah. Well, when I was in school, I, I was a manager at a, a retail store for years. All right. All right. So let me say this. Most, most people out there, and because I, I worked in corporate America for 10 plus years, and I remember how, how safe I felt, right? Like, oh, I, you know, I have a security blanket. All I got to do is show up, right? So that, that's not the case. I mean, we are really seeing that the safest, the, 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 the most, the best security blanket you can have right now is being in control of your financial outcome. For people out there that, you know, have lost their jobs, you know, God bless you. And I hope that, you know, you can get back on your feet as soon as possible. And I want people out there to, un to, to really see, to not take this moment for granted, to be aware of what's happened this year. The millions and millions and millions of people that have lost their, their livelihood, their ability to provide for their families because they felt that they were in a safe place with their employment. I want people to really see that. And I want people to understand, hey, this is why you have to roll the dice on yourself so you're never at the mercy of someone else. I want you to control your own path, your own destiny. Because you know what? A lot of these jobs, when they let you go, more than likely you were just a number. And when you and if they let you go and they, they replace you at some point, they're just, I mean, they're just gonna replace you with another person, right? So I want everybody out there to understand, like, this is a rude awakening for a lot of Americans, a rude awakening, right? I, I know you've seen it on your side. I mean, New York's, you know, New York's been, it's been tough for New York. Yep, without a doubt. It's been a, a tough year, but, you know, upward and onward, we're resilient people. And uh, I'm a big believer, everything happens for a reason. So, um, yes. You know, we're, we're looking for the silver linings and everything that's happening. One of the big areas where we're investing and in, in, uh, growing a platform is in cost confinement, helping businesses confine the, the costs and, and operate a little leaner and a little meaner so that next time, hopefully we can help people have a, a couple of more bucks in the bank. Um, Carlos, what, what, where do people find you? What's the best way for people to find you and learn more about uh, your new projects that are coming out and to follow your content? What's the best way for people to be? Uh, you know what, brother? I'm, I'm, I'm very responsive on, um, on Instagram. Very, you know, it's, it's, it's very easy to respond there, right, for some reason because Facebook is just full of all kinds of stuff now, right? So um, Instagram, I'm very uh, – at Carlos Reyes, at C-A-R-L-O-S-R-E-Y-E-S, at Carlos Reyes. I'm very responsive. I'm so responsive that I actually do voice memos back sometimes. Hey, how's it going? Da, 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 da. 
I'm very responsive and, um, and it would be an absolute, you know, privilege to, to try to serve in some way, shape or form. You know, if I could, if I, I love when people give me feedback and say, brother, what you said, when you said this, I really felt that it, it, it impacted my life and I am better for it today. Right. So that means the world to me. I want people out there to, to know that I will never take my platform for granted right? The Lord has given me this platform and it's my responsibility to be a good steward with this platform. And that's why, that's why God has me where he has me. And he's in full control. He's in full control. And that, that's the beautiful part. There's no, there's no more anxiety. There's no more stress. I come from a place of love and peace now because God's taking care of everything. So I want people out there, if you look me up on Instagram at Carlos Reyes, I will always, anything, Anything, whether it's real estate related, life related, marriage related. I mean, I've been been with my woman for 19 years. You know, she's the love of my life. She's my soulmate. So, you know, I got really lucky. <laughs> so I'm there for anybody that needs me. Uh, we really appreciate it. God bless you and your family. Make sure you don't forget the Tooth Fairy this evening. I, I can't thank you enough for your time. You've had, a, like I said, you've had an impact on me. And, and I know you'll continue to have an impact on me. And for that, I'll always be grateful I uh, really appreciate you coming on today. Absolutely, brother. And you know what? Pardon the landscapers out here. I am so sorry. Oh, man, uh, it's all good. It's Love every it. other week. But uh, thank you so much for having me today, man. God bless you. And let me know if I can be of service to you in any way. Absolutely. God bless. And everyone, I hope you, you took away as much value from this as I did today. Uh, everyone out there, stay safe.